All right, we're back, uh, Contrast Media Part 2. We'll start with reactions, precautions and reactions for contrast media. Ideally, to minimize adverse reactions, you need to obtain an informed consent and get an accurate and thorough medical history. Focus on their allergies. Have they had a previous reaction before? That's a big red flag. And then for departments, you're going to want to make sure you check their labs. So <clears throat> the BON, creatinine, and um, GFR levels verify medications that they're on, especially the medications that are used to treat diabetes. The metformin or glucophage medication should be discontinued for 48 hours after the use of iodine and contrast media. Um, you know, this may change department protocol. Um, but so always check that. Know your emergency protocols for the department and where your crash cart is located. Also, is there a code blue button in your room that you could press? Um, do you know where to locate it? Do you know the emergency protocols? Do you know a code blue but phone number um, or a web page for the team? Make sure you know what to do in case of an emergency. The lab values, which in diagnostic we deal with a little bit less than say CT, um, but the BUN is the blood urea um, nitrogen test that measures the amount of urea nitrogen that's in the blood. Normal range general value is between 8 and 20. The creatinine is how well your kidneys are performing, uh, and they're filtering the waste from your blood. Normal range is 0.7 to 1.2 as sort of a general range, and then the EGFR is going to help the healthcare provider spot sort of problems with your kidneys, including kidney disease, and the GFR stands for um, glomerular filtration rate. Normal is between 90 and 120. A GFR below 60 suggests kidney disease. And, and these numbers may vary by your department protocol as well, and so these are just general, uh, what they mean in general um, ranges. Reactions. So we separate reactions into mild, moderate, and severe. So a mild reaction um, could be nausea, nausea mild vomiting, um, the urticaria is hives, itching. You want to observe them, monitor their vitals, might need an antihistamine. Moderate, uh, that term again for hives, um, bronchospasm, laryngeal edema, closely monitoring those symptoms and then treating the type. And then severe could be life-threatening, um, hypotension, tachycardia, bradycardia, severe seizures, pulmonary edema. Um, how do we react? Generally, the reaction is going to occur between the first minute or first few minutes of the injection. Reactions can be unpredictable and appear quickly, so it's good to know your protocols. Where are your emergency equipment? That way you can go and grab it quickly. Um, mild reactions can worsen to severe at any time. Uh, so don't disregard just a little bit of hives. It may move quickly. Monitor your patient before, during, and after the exam. So your mild reactions, um, I understand vomiting seems severe to people, but vomiting is not a severe reaction. If they're vomiting, um, if there's a patient that can't roll onto their side, you're going to want to roll them onto their side for them. Notify the physician if uh, there's a vasovagal response. You want to put them in Trendelenburg, so their head lower than their heart. If it's a moderate reaction, um, there might be a little bit more um, concerning things. Um, you want to notify the physician, document any reactions, and they may require some medications um, at that point. Severe reactions are going to be a life-threatening situation. You're going to have to possibly call a code. Um, if the physician is nearby, you're going to notify them. Assist with CPR on all of these. Documentation is key. What happened? Who did you call? Obviously, documentation at the end, not in the middle of the code. Um, but work to help the patient quickly. Know your protocols. Know where your equipment lies. And just be aware of your patient and what's going on with them. Emergency medications. As technologists, we don't um, push these medications uh, routinely, 
but we should be aware of some basic um, emergency medications that might be used in the diagnostic radiology area. Um, so you might see some of these, uh, especially the Decadron and Benadryl for allergic reactions, um, things like that. So we may need to know what it's used for and why it's used. So these are ones that I would know, these ones I marked in yellow. The local reactions, so what happens sort of at the local level, there could be um, phlebitis, which is inflammation of the vein. So they could have pain, redness, swelling um, around the access site. The extravasation or infiltration is leakage of the contrast media. This is more common in CT. Um, so if they inject the contrast and run the CT and there's no contrast there, uh, they may come over for an x-ray wherever the um, contrast went in and we'll see where it is. But um, it can be a little bit dangerous depending on amount and uh, when it's found. So they should be aware of it. They may um, need to monitor it and put some, um, you know, compresses on there. It could be painful, stinging, burning sensations. There could be some edema around the IV injection site, so it does need to be monitored. Um, there are two main complications that occur. It could be skin necrosis or compartment syndrome. And necrosis is the death of the cells or tissue, and then compartment syndrome is a painful and dangerous con condition. Uh, there's pressure, pressure buildup um, from internal bleeding or swelling, and um, that can be work very quickly and be very dangerous, so we need to be aware of it. There are pre-medication protocols for some departments. Um, sorry about that, though. my daughter came in with a question. Um, pre-medications, so steroids and Benadryl is recommended um, for patients who've had a previous reaction to contrast. If they've had a previous reaction, they are up to 44% more at risk for um, reaction again. And um, this is just an example of a pre-medication protocol. They might take um, prednisone within this many hours um, before the contrast, and then, you know, this medication. So this was just an example. Seafood and drug allergies. So allergies to shellfish have long been mistaken um, as a correlation between that and iodinated contrast allergy. There's no evidence regarding um, cross-reactivity between allergy to shellfish and allergy to contrast media. Um, so it was um, actually the shellfish allergy is to um, the protein in shellfish, not to the iodine. Quick conclusion here, we use contrast media as um, part of our medical imaging. We're going to try and see anatomy that we can't normally visualize. Your um, contrast is going to be either positive or negative relies on the photoelectric effect. The iodine-based contrast media can cause a reaction or anaphylaxis. Non-ionic or low osmolality contrast agents um, have reduced patient reactions, but are still a reality of imaging. And then patient reactions and care are responsibilities of the radiologic technologists and all within the department. And monitoring your patient is key. So accurate history, um, get that consent form signed, and then monitor them, be aware of their um, sort of demeanor and um, how they appear in the beginning. Check them multiple times throughout the exam and then um, at the end. So I will come back with the venipuncture review.